friends, good evening to all of you. Very nice to meet all of you. Greetings. You are smiling. Very good. Good. <laughs> nice to see you are all smiling at the end of the seminar, you know. You had third day today, isn't it? Still your spirit is very high. Congratulations. First, uh, I would like to greet uh, respected friend, Vice Chancellor, Indira Gandhi National Open University and Professor, that is Professor V. N. Rajshekhar Pillai, uh, Mr. Dr. M. P. Narayan, Dr. Limpo Thakur, and uh, Dr. Thaizir al nomi and Dr. Ravi Gupta, and all of you friends, my greetings. I have come on the last day and the last session, so I try to understand what all the things you have discussed. And would you like to say what important thing you got it? No, you don't want to say. <laughs> eh? Don't want to say that? Any one of you? One good thing you got today after all the meetings. Yeah. Education. That's the message you got. Education is happening. Okay, very good. Very nice. Yes. Anybody else? Just like that, Lee? Yeah. Eh? Huh? Anyway, I, what I understood from various proceedings, I am sure all of you had a very fruitful discussion uh, during the last three days. From the face, I understand that. I saw a number of recommendations and I was sent to a recommendation pertaining to the education skill development, important, innovating and creating a new knowledge, connectivity among institutions with people, another important area, expansion of education, implementing strategies for right to education, a self-evaluation system, public-private partnership model for enhancing the effectiveness of education, sharing of best practices, among and between institutions, that's why you have all assembled, global participation in education development, upgrading the qualities of the teachers and building a sound education infrastructure. That's a big uh, requirement. In fact, these recommendations should be studied by the governments and culminate in time board actions. I congratulate all the participants and the organizers of this World Education Summit for the excellent work what they have done. Okay, friends? Now, particularly, <coughs> I went through some of the papers pres present in the summit. The organizers sent me some papers. And uh, they indicate considerable research is going on throughout the world for improving the quality of education provided to the youth. Uh, particularly one paper I saw, Mr. Peter Mosellius and his co- Peter Mosellius here? Mr. Peter Mosellius and his co-authors have studied the impact on formal learning in primary school education by providing one laptop per child. And the, is this is equivalent to one system. Somewhere in village in Bangalore, in Karnataka I saw, the school, primary school, got the computer, uh, the number of computers, and in the dropouts it is reduced. The team has found out there has been a noticeable impact among the students on formal learning in subjects like mathematics and English through this process. It's a good point, and we must learn that. There is another paper uh, presented by Devasis Mondal and Subhadas Subha Malik and on the topic beyond pen and paper test. Who is that? Is he here? Achha, uh, beyond pen and paper test. This paper proposes a project-based evaluation system at the primary school and at middle school level where a child is rewarded for multiple intelligence. I like this idea. We have to find such a innovative techniques for the evaluation which is not creating a threatening environment for the student as it happens today in the board examinations. Okay, friends, with this uh, I will go to the topic what I am going to talk to you. I am delighted to give the keynote address at the final session of the first World Education Summit 
organized by the Indira Gandhi National Open University, Center for Science Development and the Media Studies and Gillette Techno Media Private Limited. My greetings to all of you. I particularly greet the distinguished guests who come from various countries to participate and share their views in this World Education Summit. I am happy to know that the summit has become a single platform for discussing all aspects of school education, higher education, skill development and vocational education needed for the empowerment of societies where all the stakeholders concerned with the development of education are present. I am sure the deliberation of the summit has resulted in the evolution of our policies, tools and methods of learning for realizing the goals of education for all in a time-bound manner. I have a message for the submit participants. While India, while India should be open to sharing of expertise and the experience available in many nations, it should be remembered that uh, it has 600 million youth and hence Indian policy and education and training has to be to walk on its own shadow. Has to be to walk on its own shadow because we have to manage 600 million people education. That means India has to evolve a unique system of education with the employability as focus, with the employability as focus, instead of production of a large number of graduate secondary school personnel. This approach of education is also applicable for distance education programs of the nation and other nations. Hence, friends, I would like to share a few thoughts during this validity session on my subject of discussion in the next 15 minutes. Education system should generate, education system should generate employment generators and not employment seekers alone. This is the, this is the topic. Is okay? This topic is okay? You like it? Uh, only if you say yes, I will do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, I, first I am going to talk to you, the employment and education. Presently, our university education system is contributing 3 million graduates and postgraduates every year. And 7 million students after their secondary school education, in 10th class, 10th and 12th, they stop. 10th and 12th class, they stop. About 7 million students every year. And uh, uh, seek employment every year. That, that, that is, nearly 10 million youth of graduate secondary school students, nearly 10 million youth are injected into the society every year seeking employment. But they are not equipped with the skill in the case of a secondary education, expertise in the case of higher education, which is needed by the industrial market or the user. Thus, there is a large gap in the availability of an employable skill. For example, as per the NASCOM and the McKenzie report, it is, yes, it is estimated that IT, ITS and PPO sector alone will need 9 million direct jobs and 6 million indirect jobs in construction, retail, transportation within the decade, whereas we do not have such capacity in the country to generate this number which will be acceptable to the three sectors of economy. Similarly, in the case of a nursing professional, India is in process of improving the healthcare services which will need additional 0.5 million nurses and paramedical staff. As per the latest report, worldwide requirement for the nurses are estimated to be over 1 million within the next few years. Presently in India, about 50,000 nurses qualify every year. In the small scale sector presently, 12 million units are employing, employing around 28 million people. Many of them are unregistered units. There's a need to bring all the unit and units under the registered category so that all the people could be provided benefits accordingly. At present, the small scale industries contribute to an export of over $30 billion each year which is expected to increase over $50 billion within the next five years. This will require addition of nearly 28 million people within five years with variety of skills in garments, processed foods, 
pharma, elec pharma, electronic, precision engineering, and cosmetic products. How to bridge this gap between availability and requirement in the global, globalized economy? To bridge the gap, an interface is needed uh, between the education system and the needs of three sectors of the economy. At present, India has 600 million youth, 600 million youth, 600 million youth under the age and around the age of 25, which will continuously be growing till the year 2050. During this period, India needs a large number of talented youth with higher education for the task of knowledge acquisition, knowledge importing, and knowledge creation, knowledge sharing towards national development missions. The next area I thought of talking to you, what is called Global Human Resource Cadre. I am proposing this, Global Human Resource Cadre. Keeping the above scene in mind, the universities and school education system need to create two cadres of personnel. Number one, a global cadre of skilled youth with specific knowledge of special skills. Number two, the another global cadre of youth with a higher education with special expertise. These two cadres, these two cadres should be required not only for powering the manufacturing and service sector of India, but also fulfilling the skilled human resource requirement globally. Thus, the universities and secondary school education system will have to work towards increasing the throughput of the university education system from the existing 11% to 15% by the year 2015, 20% by the year 2020, 25% by the year 2025, and 30% by the year 2030. The graduates who come out of the universities need to have a specialization linked to the employment potential in all the three sectors of the economy. I would recommend that among the graduates coming out from various universities, 90% have to have inbuilt training as a part of the graduation program for taking up assignment in industrial service sector and agriculture management. The remaining 10% of the graduate may, be, may opt for research and teaching. The skill-oriented education category, which may be around 30% of the overall population by 2030, which will have a people with world-class skill set in areas such as food processing, construction, carpentry, electrical system, repair of mechanical system, fashion design, paralegal, paramedical, accountancy, sales and marketing, soft, software, hardware maintenance, and service, software quality, and assurance, uh, quality assurance personnel. Skill development. I was recently, many of you have studied, I was recently going through an article in The Economist which talked about the growing strength of the Indian workforce. The article says that the next 10 years, out of every 10 new workers around the world, three would be Indians. This workforce will be spread across the different sectors of the economy and involved in a variety of services. The education system should be so designed that 25% of the available time is utilized for importing internationally competitive skills to the student, which they are studying in the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th class. This can be complemented with one year of higher level skill training after the completing the 12th class. That means they are studying when they are 10th class, 11th class, 12th class. Such an education system will enable generation of a large number of skilled workforce in a time-bound manner. Where the important skill, care has to be taken to ensure that the skilled manpower is matched to the skill requirement of the particular sector of the economy and the geographic location to prevent infectious movement. Such an approach will enable higher productivity, which in turn will result in better competitiveness. Finally, our education system must also ensure that all the remaining people should at least have a secondary school qualification with the training for employment in agriculture or service sector.